ISPF. I is going to tell you all about it. And speaking of keyboards, this is a panel-driven interface, mostly navigated with your keyboard. A lot of mainframe users do all of their work using ISPF. As I demonstrate the ISPF editor, I'm going to be entering commands in two different places. When I enter a command at the command line, that is what's called a primary command, and they're entered at the top next to the word command in this arrow. When I enter a line command, I'll be typing over the line numbers on the left. In the last video, JCO and SDSF, we used a batch job to import a raw list of Garbage Pill Kids names to the mainframe. Our raw list of Garbage Pill Kids names looks like this. Card number name, card number name. What we'd like to do is get rid of all the card numbers and move these second names to their own lines. Sure, we could write a program to do this, but why not just get it all done in ISPF's editor? The first thing we can do is get rid of those card numbers on the left by shifting the columns to the left. To do that, we'll use a block line command. Open paran, open paran on the first line, and open paran, open paran on the last line of the block that we want to shift to the left. Typing a number next to either of these will shift the columns that many bytes, and these first few need to be shifted three bytes to the left. Most of the lines still have a second number and name. How do we deal with these? What we eventually want to use is the text flow command. To use it correctly, we're going to need to get rid of those remaining card numbers and line up all those second names in the same column. We know each card number ends in an A or a B. To avoid altering A's or B's that are in a name, let's flag all these A's and B's by changing all the numbers to tildes. You could use any rarely used character for this. I'm using tildes. We'll have to do this 10 times for the numbers 0 through 9. On the command line, type C for change. We're going to change zeros first to tildes, and we want to do it for all instances. We'll do this up to nine. Now we have a tilde tilde A or a tilde tilde B in front of every one of those second names that we want to push to the right a bit, and you'll see why in a minute. Let's push the tilde tilde A's out about 15 bytes. To do that, we'll use the change command again to change all tilde tilde A's to tilde tilde A's followed by 15 spaces. And you need to use quotes to capture those spaces. And all because we want to change all instances. We'll do the same with the tilde tilde B's. Now we can get rid of all those tilde tilde A's and tilde tilde B's by changing them to null or two quotes. We need to line those second names up in the same column. Turn the column numbers on by typing calls on the command line. To find the first column used for those second names, we'll use the find command to find a picture string made up of any alphabetical character. The way to do that is find picture string at sign, and we'll start with column 31. And there's the R in creepy. We'll try column 30. There's the C in creepy. Let's try 29. And none found. So the names start in column 30. To line these second names up in column 30, we'll use another change command. Change space, quote, space, quote, to null, quote, quote, in column 30. And you'll have to repeat this command a few times until there are no longer any spaces in column 30. We're just about ready to use text flow. I've already removed those sequence numbers at the end of each line by using the unnum command. Now to create strings beginning at column 30, we'll change all spaces to tildes again, beginning in column 30, and we need to specify the last column, which is 80. Now we have strings we can flow to the next line using text flow. To do that, we simply type TF on the first line and the column number we want to start the flow from, which is 30. Voila! Let's change those tildes back to spaces. And there we are. Wow! Wow! Wow!
We've used ISPF's editor to format that raw list into a nice list of individual names on each line. Stay tuned for the final video in this series, the Rex programming language, to see how we'll write a program that will take a name as input, parse this new list, and find your garbage pail kid name.